Today I'm going to show you how you can increase your chances to be eligible for the next blue chip airdrop. Now a lot of people have recently been left disappointed with the likes of Manta, Starknet, Wormhole. So today I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step guide, a tutorial of how you can increase your chances across three potential huge airdrops. Now if you do enjoy the video, please do drop a like, subscribe to the channel, but let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. And what we're going to cover today is the use of three different bridges. So we're basically going to be transferring funds across different networks using the official bridges of these projects. So to go through the list of what we're going to cover today, we're going to be using the ZK Sync bridge. We're also going to cover another way that you could potentially receive some ZK Sync tokens upon their airdrop. We're going to look at the new L2, which is Blast, a lot of people talking about it, and their bridge recently went live, so we're going to dive into that. And then finally, we're going to look at the Aptos bridge. And some people might be thinking right now, well, Aptos is already live, so it doesn't make sense, but it will all become clear as we move through the video. But before we move into the ZK Sync bridge, there are a couple of important things that we need to discuss. Number one is that doing these tasks does not guarantee you are going to get the airdrop. We are taking our best guess to try and be eligible for these future airdrops but it will depend on a number of different factors such as snapshot dates, eligibility criteria. And for example, if we do two transactions on each of these bridges, you may be eligible for one, but then another project may say that you needed to do five transactions. So it is completely down to how that project decides to set that criteria. The second thing to note is that gas fees must be considered here because when we are transacting across these different bridges, it is going to cost us in gas fees. And right now, Ethereum, let's face it, is pretty stupid. Transactions can cost anywhere between $30 to $100. So if you have a small portfolio, then it might not be worth doing these tasks, where if you're playing with a bit more capital, then you may think that the risk reward there is worth swallowing if you are to receive the airdrop. Now, one thing I'll do at the end of the video after going through all of the step-by-step -step guides is basically put them in rank of which airdrops I would personally be focusing on as a priority down to a number of different factors. So the first thing we're going to need to do is load up the wallets. Now, there's going to be two wallets that we use to complete all three tasks. First of all, you'll need a MetaMask wallet if you don't already have one. And the second wallet you're going to need is a Pontum wallet which is a native wallet on the Aptos network. Now it's just a simple process, I'll leave the links in the description so you can do that, but it's essentially creating the wallet, writing down your 12 word seed phrase and then continuing by depositing funds. Now the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is to log into a centralized exchange. I personally use Binance, I sent Ethereum to my MetaMask wallet and I sent some Aptos or APT to the Pontum wallet so that can cover gas fees later on in the video when we interact with that wallet and that chain. Now the thing is here, again, we have to consider the gas fees because if you want to split across a number of different wallets and try to really farm this as much as possible, then you are going to have gas fees per wallet and that is soon going to mount up. Now, if you're thinking about minimum amounts here, again, there is no set criteria. It really will depend on the eligibility criteria, but just consider that if you want to make a $100 transaction and gas is around $50, is it really worth it? So as we go through the video, we'll discuss potential gas fees for each chain, each bridge, and we'll also look at alternatives if there are any available. So now we will bridge over using ZK Sync. First thing we're gonna to need to do is head to the ZK Sync bridging website. Again, I'll leave the link in the description, but it is portal.zksync.io forward slash bridge. Once we've done that, we need to add the ZK Sync network to our MetaMask wallet. So we click on our Fox friend here, and basically we're going to be on the Ethereum one as default, and we're going to click top left, we're going to scroll down. I've already got it populated here because I've done this in the past, but if it's not already there for you, you click add network, and from that point, it probably will appear in, these pop in this popular list. You'll just click add, if not, you'll use the search bar, but then once you've approved it, it will then be part of your MetaMask wallet. Then at that point, we just need to connect the wallet to the bridge. So we'll do exactly like this. I've got a bridging demo account there that we'll use for today. I'm not actually going to perform the transactions. I've already done this in the past on a number of different wallets. So it's gonna tell me I've got no funds, which is fine. 
But essentially the process at this point is going to be very straightforward. You're gonna input the amount of Ethereum that you want to bridge over. And FYI, it can be different coins, but to keep things simple, I'd recommend just using some ETH, especially if you've already got some. And from that point, you will click continue. A prompt will appear in MetaMask to approve the transaction. So we're going to approve that. Again, keep an eye on that gas fee. If it's too much, you know, you may want to reconsider. That's entirely down to you and your personal situation and funds. But from that point, once you've approved it, it's going to take around 15 minutes. Don't panic if you don't immediately see the funds. It does take time. There'll be a countdown that appears on the website. And then if you go back into your MetaMask wallet at that point, you'll be able to flick over from the Ethereum network, scrolling down over to ZK Sync, and you'll be able to see the Ethereum appear there. So that's pretty much the process. It's relatively straightforward. One thing I will say is always leave some Ethereum in the wallet on either end, on either network, because you will need it to cover gas fees if you're going back and forth. Now, the other thing here is whether you want to send them funds straight back to Ethereum, that's entirely up to you. Again, when it comes to eligibility criteria, it's very difficult to call. We don't have any set in stone information. So the snapshot, the eligibility criteria, it could be based on the amount of transactions, the amount of volume. It could be based on whether you left some Ethereum on the ZK Sync bridge. So if you bring it straight back over, Again, this exactly same process here on the website. It'll take another 15 minutes or so. All these things are speculative. So for me, I've been using the ZK Sync Bridge for a while. So I've been using it organically. So it's a little bit of a different situation. But if you are actually using it to find the airdrop, you may want to think about the amount of transactions you do. You may want to do it a couple of times if you can afford it, if you've got the gas to cover that. Um, but it really is personal preference at this point. Now there is a lot of speculation on Twitter that the ZK Sync snapshot may have already been taken. Again, this isn't confirmed, but it is something to keep in mind when you are prioritizing, if you have to prioritize which of these airdrops you want to try and participate in. Now, an alternative here is actually using the GRVT exchange. I will leave my referral link in the description because these are the flagship exchange of ZK Sync. It is a hybrid exchange, a new exchange that is going to be launching very soon, and they are doing their own airdrop. Now, the thing is here is they are currently doing ZK Sync mystery boxes, and the more raffle tickets you get, the more boxes you can open, and you'll keep the rarest one that you pull. Now it isn't confirmed what is inside these ZK Sync mystery boxes yet, but with them being ZK Sync branded, you know, in my opinion, just my opinion, I think there is a good chance that there could be some tokens. So this is an alternative way that isn't gonna cost you an arm and a leg in gas and still gives you some kind of exposure. So now we'll move on to the second bridge and that is Blast, the new shiny L2 that everybody is talking about. Now, the benefit here is that the main net only went live a couple of weeks back. So there's a good chance that they're not going to turn around and say the snapshot was taken in December because quite frankly, they just wasn't live. So when it comes to main net use, I think there's a good chance that we can still receive an airdrop. Now, when it comes to actually bridging over to the Blast network, it's a very, very similar process to what we've just done with ZK Sync. So we'll go through it step by step again. There is one slight difference. Now, again, we're gonna to go to the main bridge website. Again, link in description, but it is blast.io forward slash en forward slash bridge. Once we've done that, we need to add the Blast network to the MetaMask wallet. So this is why it's very slightly different to what we've just done. Again, we're gonna scroll down. It's not going to appear in our networks. We need to add the network. But this time, we're not going to see it in the favorites. And when we search Blast, nothing's going to appear. And this is likely because it's so new that MetaMask haven't added it to their list yet. But what you can do is add a network manually. Now it's gonna ask for these different pieces of information and I'll leave a link in the description so you can see exactly where to find that. It's on the Blast documentation website. It's this information at the top here and you'll be able to key it in manually. It's pretty straightforward. Once you've done that, you'll accept it, approve it, whatever it says and then you can come back to the Blast bridging website. Now, all you'll have to do is connect your wallet. So again, very similar process. And at that point, you'll input the amount of Ethereum that you want to send over. Now, the thing is here, and I'll just click onto the Blast documentation again, is we can see when it comes with withdrawals, 
Withdrawals can take up to 14 days to complete. Now this is very important information because with ZK Sync, the, the funds can be back to you in 15 minutes, but with Blast it's going to be two weeks. Now they're trying to discourage you to take it back out because they want to keep their TVL up and so on. But you have to think about whether this is an opportunity cost to you. Now, if you are holding Ethereum anyway and you don't really care where it is as long as you've got access to it and you're not planning on selling it anytime soon, that's a very different situation to someone who really needs that Ethereum or you know they're gonna use it to buy some altcoins that they wanna buy or you know whatever it may be. So you have to take that into consideration because 14 days is a lot longer than 15 minutes. But essentially when you click submit, it's going to ask you to approve the transaction in MetaMask. You're gonna pay the gas. Again, you have to make sure that it's worthwhile. And then that's pretty much it. You have then sent over your um, Ethereum to the Blast network and you've used the bridge. Now from that point, you can click on the withdraw tab and then you can send it back over. But the key here is that it prompts you to let you know that if you do withdraw back to Ethereum, you won't be earning points or yield. Now the points is what I think is gonna be corresponded to the airdrop. So it's probably worthwhile leaving some Ethereum over there if you wanna play it safe. And also earning yield, that's just gonna basically give you a little bonus on top of what you've deposited. So definitely worth keeping this in mind because it, the points is likely going to have a huge impact on the airdrop itself. But when it comes to the risk reward, I think with them putting stuff like this on the website, it's very clear that the snapshot date hasn't been taken. And last but not least, we're going to use the Aptos bridge. Now Aptos already have a token, so you may be wondering why we're doing this, but it's because it's powered by layer zero and that is the airdrop we're trying to farm. Now again, this hasn't been confirmed, but with a best guess, we're using this bridge created by Layer Zero to try and jump on that airdrop. Now, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we're going to need two wallets for this. We've already got MetaMask with Ethereum loaded up, but we also need a Pontum wallet, which is a native wallet on the Aptos chain. Now, to do this, we've got the website here. Again, I'll leave the link in the description. You'll be able to just add it to your browser or download it to your phone, whatever you're doing it on. I prefer personally using a computer. So I'll add it to Chrome. I'm a Brave browser user. And just like MetaMask in the top right corner, it's going to appear just here. So that is my Aptos wallet downloaded. Now, you'll need to write down your seed phrase and all the usual stuff. Make sure you've kept that safe on paper, blah, blah, blah. But once you've got the two wallets, the next thing you're going to need to do is make sure that the Aptos wallet has some APT in there so you can cover them transaction fees to send funds back. Now, the easiest way, like I mentioned, to do this for me is to go into a centralized exchange like Binance, purchase some APT and send it over to that address. Now, the APT chain is supported by Binance and the withdrawal process is just like any other coin. So hopefully it's nice and straightforward for you. So once we've got two wallets, they're loaded up, we're going to then use the bridge. And you'll have to connect two wallets here because we're actually moving funds across different wallets, not just different chains. So the top one, we're gonna connect MetaMask once it's done. Okay, that's connected. And then at the bottom, we are going to connect Pontum. And we're going to continue and approve that. So essentially what's going to happen is if you want to send some Ethereum, you're gonna put the amount in there. And then when you click, like you can see here, not enough native gas, but you'll have Ethereum in that wallet to cover that. And then you'll click confirm. The wallet will prompt up in the right hand side. You'll click approve. And then pretty quickly, actually, it's probably gonna take around two to five minutes. Your funds will then appear in the Aptos wallet that we've just created. Now the key here, of course, is that if you want to then send that back, do multiple transactions, you need gas to cover both sides. So that's where the APT comes into it because what you'll do essentially is just flip this over and then you'll be sending them funds back to the original wallet. Now, like I said, the thing is here, you need the gas to cover it. When I did this, I found that APT and Aptos was not a cheap chain by any means. It actually cost me over $100 to send that, I think it was around 2000 USDT back into the original wallet. So it's definitely worth keeping that in mind because when we're tallying up the cost of doing all these transactions, it does mount up. Again, if you wanna do it on multiple wallets, that's an extra additional cost. 
So definitely worth keeping all this stuff in mind when you're playing these airdrop farming activities and getting involved. So when it comes to putting these airdrops into an order of prioritization, in my opinion, I'd be putting Blast at the top. And the reason for that is because there's clear signs on the website and with the main net only being a couple of weeks old that the airdrop is likely. Now again, that criteria is not confirmed, but I would say it's the best guess at the moment. In second place, I'd put layer zero. Now, although that has been around for a while, it, there is not quite as much speculation around it compared to ZK Sync that the snapshot has been taken and people will miss out. Now, when it comes to ZK Sync, I personally think there could be a high chance that this snapshot was a while back and many people will be disappointed, like Manta, like Wormhole, and so on. But the saving grace here is that you can still get involved with GRVT, get a mystery box and then at least in that situation you may get some tokens through that at no extra cost. So that is the way that I order them at the moment but definitely focusing on Blast more so than the other two. So that is all for today's video. Hopefully it was useful. Hopefully you can go away and pick up some blue chip airdrops. If you did enjoy it do drop a like Comment and let me know what your thoughts are on these airdrops or potential airdrops at the moment. And also subscribe to the channel because your support is greatly appreciated. With that said, please do trade safe, invest safe, airdrop farm safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.